Thank you uh, very much. I'm Ron Galperin, and um, I am uh, pleased to be here as uh, Chair of the Commission on Revenue Efficiency. I uh, wanted to really thank you very much for organizing this, and uh, thank you for everybody who is here, because there are a lot of choices that you have of what you can do on a Saturday morning, especially a sunny Saturday morning. And the fact that you're here is a, a tremendous testament to how much you really care about the city and uh, helping to make a, a, a difference. Um, you've no doubt uh, heard some sobering news, and, and you'll continue to do so over the course of uh, this morning, uh, and some painful choices and uh, things that uh, are not necessarily good news. In fact, uh, some of it is downright bad. But um, I think there's also some good news here, which is that the problems that we have in the city of LA from a financial point of view are fixable. In fact, they're eminently fixable, uh, but they are going to require uh, some leadership, they're going to require uh, making choices, some accountability, some creativity, and some organization. Uh, what I'd like to talk about is uh, a little bit about the Commission on Revenue Efficiency, how we came to be, uh, a little bit about my own uh, odyssey uh, that brought me uh, uh, to the point of, uh, of chairing this commission, uh, a little bit about the blueprint uh, for reform of city collections which we issued several months ago, and uh, the uh, phase of work that we're in right now as a commission. So, uh, first of all, a little bit about this uh, commission uh, and about my own odyssey. Uh, a couple of years ago, I remember seeing an email that went out from the council member from the uh, district that I lived in, continue to live in. And uh, it was a, uh, a well-written email that was explaining to all the constituents why our streets were not going to get repaved. And uh, it detailed how we have 6,500 miles of streets in the city of LA, and that year we were budgeted for about 175 miles of repaving, plus a little extra for transit corridors. You divide that up, that 175 by 15 council districts, and you're left with pretty much no repaving over the course of the year, and uh, a wait of 30 to 40 years to get your street repaved. I looked at this and I thought, this is insane. It's a very well-written letter and it explains the problem, but what about the solutions and why are we in this mess? And that, that led me to uh, start getting obsessed with the city budget and I had an opportunity to, um, to pursue uh, this obsession through my involvement uh, on the neighborhood council and with the uh, neighborhood council budget advocates. And I really want to give uh, kudos, first of all, to this year's Neighborhood Council Budget Advocates. And I see uh, their chair walking in the door at this very moment uh, and for just an outstanding job and for taking the, uh, the role of the budget advocates to another uh, level. Uh, and also uh, uh, to really give kudos to uh, the mayor's office and, and most notably to uh, Deputy Mayor Larry Frank, who um, was a tremendous partner in making that whole Neighborhood Council budget process uh, as meaningful as it has become, and each year it's become more meaningful, there's more meat on those bones, and uh, you had a, a tremendous part in that, so thank you very much. Uh, now, um, in, in speaking with a number of different council members, uh, the lead on creating this commission was by Council President Eric Garcetti, uh, who really saw the need to create a special commission, not a permanent one, but one that is ad hoc, to really delve into the issue of collections and to delve into uh, the issue of revenues and opportunities for efficiency. And, uh, and that is what we have sought to do. There are seven members of the commission. Uh, we were created about a year ago. Uh, actually, we're just about at the end of our term because we're not supposed to be around forever, uh, although there's a, a motion now to extend us for another three months so that we can complete our work. Uh, two members are appointed uh, by the mayor. Uh, two by the council president, and then one by the controller, and uh, two others by council members. Uh, and I have the honor of chairing this, which is an amazing group of people. Uh, and they represent a cross uh, of a variety of different expertise. Uh, we have people who have been in the collection business. Uh, we have uh, uh, a former council member, uh, who's our vice chair, Sina Sikowski, who's just outstanding. We have. Um, uh, the uh, representative of the Coalition for LA City uh, Workers, uh, Cheryl Parisi, uh, everybody that we have on this commission is just wonderful. Uh, and uh, we all agree on the following, that the city deserves, every member of, and every person and every resident of this city, every business deserves a city that works. And we deserve to get our money's worth. And the question is, are we in fact getting our money's worth? And are we doing things as well as we should? And 
In some cases, the answer is sort of yes, but in many cases, unfortunately, the answer is no. Let's talk about collections for a, uh, for a moment here. Uh, and I'll give you the numbers that we found in, and that we put into our report, uh, the blueprint for reform of city collections, which, by the way, is available if you go to core, C-O-R-E dot L-A-City dot org. And you'll find that report as well as minutes and, and agendas for our, our, uh, for our uh, commission. Uh, so here are the numbers. Now, mind you, they're a little bit deceptive, and I'll explain why in a moment, but they're very meaningful nonetheless. A staggering 77%, roughly, of the city's $541 million in non-tax receivables, more than 120 days past due, with uh, about 43% more than two years past due. Most of that is uncollectible at this moment. Uh, about nearly 50% of the counts eligible for collection uh, agency referrals were actually referred. Uh, less than half of city departments are applying interest or penalties to pass due accounts. Uh, if you have a choice of whether to pay Bill A or, uh, uh, or to uh, pay uh, Bill B, and Bill A doesn't have any interest or penalties, which one do you think you're going to pay first? Uh, you're probably going to pay B. Uh, the city also still has no real centralized billing and collection process. The systems are woefully outdated, although there is progress that is being made in this area, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And this tally that, that I mentioned doesn't even include uncollected taxes, intergovernmental transfers, uh, unbuilt services, and, and entrepreneurial opportunities for the city. We have vast assets that really are, are uh, uh, not being put to their maximum use. Now, why did I say some of these numbers are deceptive? Well, two of the biggest pools of this $541 million are from fire department, which is mostly uh, ambulance billings, and from the Department of Transportation, uh, which is mostly parking tickets. Well, let's take the, uh, the EMS, or the, the uh, ambulance billings, as an example. Uh, and there are about $175 million or so uh, of those billings every year. But let's face it, <coughs> you send out a bill for $1,000 or more, uh, you're going to get some from insurance companies or from Medicare or from Medi-Cal, but there are an awful lot of people who simply cannot pay. And no matter how you chase after them, they're not going to be able to pay that. And we have to be cognizant of that. Uh, a lot of it is not legally collectible that we have on our books, interestingly enough. Because if Medicare or if Medi-Cal uh, pays a certain amount, we are not legally, in most cases, able to go after the individual for that difference. But it's still sitting on our books, kind of polluting the numbers, dare I say. Uh, and in the case of DOT, uh, the uh, fact is that we collect on in excess of 80% of the tickets that we issue. However, the percentage that we don't collect on with interest and with penalties, it keeps on growing and growing and growing, and it stays on our books. But really, much of it is not going to be collectible. So we've got to clean up our books. And we've got to really look at where the opportunities to collect better. Because there are, in the final analysis, at least as I see it, hundreds of millions of dollars, potentially, that are being left on the table every year. And that is money that can be used to keep people employed, to keep our streets safe, to keep them paved, to keep our uh, trees trimmed. There's a limitless number of things that we, quite frankly, need in the city. So our number one recommendation, we issued 65 of them. Uh, and, uh, and you can, can read them all. It's a 109-page report. But number one on the list is the creation of an inspector general for revenue and collections. Not a, not a permanent position uh, and not uh, a, a permanent bureaucracy, but something uh, which would be an opportunity to really focus on revenue and collections and efficiencies over, say, a two-year period. The fact of the matter is there are so many different folks that have a responsibility when it comes to this that with who does the buck stop is the question that we kept asking ourselves. There's a role, of course, for the mayor's office and for the CAO and for the controller and for the office of finance, which was created 10 years ago. Uh, in the charter uh, to do centralized billing and collections. There are a lot of, the city attorney is involved. There are a lot of folks that are involved, but with whom does the buck actually stop? And so we see that as absolutely being necessary to do coordination. A uh, part of it is also holding the departments uh, accountable for following procedures. 
Uh, the fact is in 2005, there was an executive directive number five that was issued by the mayor's office with seven rather simple bullet points of what departments